Good evening, Stevens Point. I'm Nathan Wagner. And I'm Claudia Neve. This week on SBTV News, we report a military plane crash, the annual Portage County Cultural Festival is back, and learn more about Schmeekley Reserve, the Spring Candlelight Hike Festival. All of this and more when we return. At least five people perished when a cargo plane from the Puerto Rico Air National Guard crash-landed a few miles from the Savannah Hilton International Airport at 11.30 a.m. on Wednesday. It took first responders a few hours to get near the scene, as the plane's fuel had lit the crash site on fire. In a statement released by the National Guard, the plane crashed during a training mission, and that the incident will be investigated further as to why the plane crashed. New clues and speculation surfaced as a nearby surveillance video has recently revealed that the plane went into an uncontrolled nosedive before hitting the ground. SPTV will keep you updated as more details are brought to the public. May the forest be with you. Follow a torchlit path around Schmeekley Reserve and Lake Jonas and enjoy s'mores, crafts, discovery stations, a scavenger hunt, and win prizes. This year's hike in Schmeekley includes campfire presentations. This event is open to the public and students. The event has a suggested donation of $2 per person or $5 per family. The 2018 Spring Candlelit Hike Festival will be from 7 to 9.30 p.m. Friday, May 4th at the Reserve's Visitor Center. And the fire demonstrations will take place at 7.30 and 8.30 p.m. For more information, visit the Schmeekly Reserve website. This past Tuesday, May 1st, came the Day of Giving, also known as DOG at UWSP. Before the day arrived, UWSP invited the students to get involved in four different ways. Giving, sharing, watching, and wearing. You could give your time to volunteer at a day of service, give food to the cupboard, or volunteer there, or give a donation to support students. On the day of the event, WSAW Channel 7 came on campus to take on the story of the day of giving. Throughout the day, you could see students showing their pointer pride with their pointer attires. On social media, such as Facebook and Instagram, there were pictures shared from classrooms, workplaces, and around campus. UWSP encouraged people to participate until the day ended at 12 a.m. on midnight. The Waste Management Society will be holding the annual Campus Electronics Recycling Drive, along with the Waste Free Gift Making event as a part of various community outreach events. Wan Chin Lee has more. Waste Management Society is open to all UWSP students. Waste Management Society had officer elections and Winograski column, making worship in TNR 255. Lindsay Carson gives a short introduce of this event. Officer elections, um, like most student organizations, we have to bring in some new officers every year. Um, so we had our officer elections and then the Winograski column making event. Um, that was really fun. Um, basically, we took uh, some sediments from nearby Dream, and we added uh, some drywall. The drywall serves as a sulfur source for the microorganisms within the sediments. We also added some lime, which acts as a calcium carbonate source for the microbes. And the Winograd column itself is you mix all of these things together, plus a carbon source. We added sawdust, um, and you make an uh, environment that microbes can feed off of each other's wastes, basically. The club only requires that students be interested in spreading waste awareness in our community. The main purpose of the event was to make a sense of community within the Waste Management Society. So um, with the Winograzzi columns, we use um, different waste products such as like a spaghetti sauce jar to actually hold the Winograzzi column but the sulfate source was drywall used, or that we saved from a landfill, and then also the carbon source was sawdust. Lindsay Carson describes the Gminograski column. So you basically harvest some of that, you add a couple amendments, you have a carbon source for those microbes, uh, which was the sawdust that we added, um, a calcium carbonate source, which is just your regular old gar garden lime, um, and all of those amendments end up feeding the microorganisms. So um, it, it creates different gradients where 
Um, some of the microbes prefer to stay in the bottom where there's um, not a lot of oxygen and a lot of sulfur. And then there are other microorganisms that like to stay in the top of the column that there's a lot of oxygen up there and not as much sulfur. So what ends up happening is the column ends up stratifying so there becomes different layers and it ends up looking really cool. Everyone is welcome to join in Waste Management Society and to make a Winograski column. Through a series of club activities, students know how to protect the environment and take the action in their life. It's not just for waste majors. People of different majors can join as well. But basically, we create a lot of opportunities for people to understand more about um, not just the solid waste they're creating, so the things that we're throwing away, but also the type of waste we're creating when we're flushing things down the toilet. For SPTV News, this is Wan Zhengli. For more information, contact the Waste Management Society. The annual Portage County Cultural Festival is coming up. The Portage County Cultural Festival is a day designed to celebrate ethnic diversity in Portage County, Wisconsin. Over the past 20 plus years, the festival has grown bigger, attracting more audiences. The Portage County Cultural Festival provides an opportunity to sample food, music, folk dances, native crafts, and children's games from around the world. Most importantly, this event provides the opportunity for people of different cultures to get together for a day of fun, food, and learning. The event will be held on Saturday, May 12th from 10 a.m. to 5 p.m. at the Stevens Point Area Senior High. Cinco de Mayo is an annual celebration held on May 5th. The date is observed to commemorate the Mexican Army's difficult victory over the French Empire at the Battle of Puebla on May 5th, 1862 under the leadership of General Ignacio Sar. Zaragoza. In the United States, Cinco de Mayo has become a significant annual celebration of Mexican culture and heritage. In areas of the country with large Mexican-American populations, such as Portland, Denver, and Chicago, large festivals are held. People of all backgrounds celebrate this holiday with parades, parties, and traditional Mexican music, dancing, and foods. Feel Left Out of the Wells Entertainment has organized an event to celebrate Cinco de Mayo. Nacho Ordinary Cinco de Mayo will have an open nacho bar starting at 10 p.m. The event is, will be held in the Encore Room on Cinco de Mayo Day. That is all the news we have for you this evening. We'll be right back with sports after the break. Quiet on set. We'll be back in 10, 9, 8, 7, 6, 5, 4, 3, 2, Take that. Live at SPTV, mic check, audio check, news directors adjusting the sound, teleprompter running smoothly, floor director alert, cameras are rolling, bring in the talent, where's the makeup artist, anchors ready for the news, are you ready to join SPTV? That's a wrap, lights out. Orzala, the seventh largest book printer in North America, is hiring students for the semester. We are 100% employee owned and located right here in Stevens Point, Wisconsin. All shifts currently hiring with jobs starting at $10.80 an hour. Hours are flexible. For more information, contact the Orzala HR department. Tobacco use is the largest preventable cause of death and disease in the United States. Cigarette smoke kills more than 480,000 Americans each year. 41,000 of these deaths are from exposure to secondhand smoke. Smoking harms nearly every organ in the body. Every day, more than 3,800 kids under the age of 18 can smoke their first cigarette. More than 16 million Americans live with a smoking-related disease. On average, smokers die 10 years younger than non-smokers. Smoking causes cancer, heart disease, strokes, lung diseases, diabetes, and chronic bronchitis. Welcome back, Pointers. 
In sports this week, the Pointers baseball team has continued to play some great baseball, as this past weekend, they swept the conference for the Illinois Institute of Technology in two double headers this weekend, winning all four games, winning 11-2 and 5-2 on Saturday, and winning 3-0 and 3-1 on Sunday. In a season that has been difficult because of the weather, the Pointers stand in second in the WIAC standings with a record of 14-4 in conference play. The Pointers played a doubleheader on Tuesday at Concordia, at Concordia University and split it as they lost Game 1 3-2 and won Game 2 by a score of 9-3. They're back on the field tomorrow and Saturday for doubleheaders both days against UW-Whitewater, who is ranked second in the nation. Switching over to softball now, the Pointer softball team wrapped up their regular season on Sunday with a doubleheader split against UW-River Falls with a 5-3 win in Game 1 and a 7-5 loss in Game 2. The Pointers finished the season overall with a record of 12-25 and 1-13 and and in conference play. The NFL Draft took place this past week at AT&T Stadium in Dallas and the first round created wasn't without hype and interesting turns. The Browns surprised many people by taking QB Baker Mayfield at number one overall, followed by RB Saquon Barkley to the Giants, QB Sam Darnold to the Jets, CB Denzel Ward at number four to the Browns, and D. Bradley Chubb going to the Broncos to five to round out the top five. Four quarterbacks were taken in the, in the top ten picks, with Mayfield going to the Browns, Darnold going to the Jets, Josh Allen to the Bills at number seven, and Josh Rosen to the Cardinals at number ten. The Packers certainly made some moves of their own in this draft as well. In the first round, the Packers traded away their 14th overall pick to the Saints for the 27th overall pick, a fifth round pick, and the Saints' 2019 first round pick. Green Bay would then trade picks with Seattle, receiving the 18th overall pick and the seventh round pick from the Seahawks. Packers GM would use that, would use that 18th overall draft we use that 18th overall pick to draft Louisville CB Alexander to fix up a weak secondary. As the draft continued, the Packers continued to work on drafting both sides of the ball, selecting CB Josh Jackson, linebackers Oren Burks and Kendall Donerson, wide receivers Jamon Moore, Marquez, Marquez Valdez Scaling, and Economist State Brown, offensive lineman Madison, punter J.K. Scott, defensive end James Looney, and long snapper Hunter Bradley. The NHL playoffs are underway as the second round of the playoffs got started over the weekend. In the West, the Golden Knights swept the Kings in four games and the Sharks did the same to the Ducks in their series matchup. The Jets took down the Wild in five games and the Predators held on in six against the Avalanche. In the East, the Capitals overcome an 0-2 series deficit to defeat the Blue Jackets and the Penguins took down in-state rival Philadelphia four games to two. The Lightning won in five games over the Devils, and the Bruins held on to a win in an exciting, seven, in an exciting Game 7 over the Maple Leafs. In the Western Conference second round, Winnipeg leads Nashville two games to one, and the Knights and the Sharks are tied at two games apiece. In the Eastern Conference second round, Tampa Bay leads Boston two games to one, and the Capitals lead the Penguins two games to one. The NBA playoffs are also underway as well as the first round wrapped up this past weekend. In the Eastern Conference, the Bucks, the Bucks lost in seven games against the Celtics, and the 76ers dominated the Heat to win in five games. The one-seeded Raptors took care of the Wizards in six games, while the Cavs won a wild series against the Pacers in seven games. In the West, the Rockets rolled over the Timberwolves in their first round matchup, while the Jazz put on a performance to beat the Thunder in six games. The Pelicans swept the Trailblazers in four games, and the defending champion Warriors handled the Spurs, winning in five games. In the Western Conference second round, the Rockets and the Jazz are tied at one game apiece, and the Warriors lead the Pelicans two games to nothing. Heading over to the Eastern Conference second round, the Celtics have had a 1-0 series lead over the 76ers, and the Cavs lead the Raptors one game to nothing. And that is all of the sports stories we have for you today. Up next is Deshanae Scott with Entertainment News. I'm Rachel Ellis for SPTV Sports. Very welcoming place. Even if you don't know what support you need, um, just coming down, we can look at individual schedules and talk about all the different options that are available. I believe.
believe that the TLC can definitely help students even for the slightest little bit. The writing lab, especially because you're going to have to write papers for any of the classes, they're able to proofread those and give you feedback on those. Uh, the writing lab has been around since 1973 and it's the second oldest writing lab in the United States, which is kind of cool. surprised by everything that I learned about TLC because I didn't realize there were so many resources for students. We'd love to see more students down here. I mean, it's great that we have 35% of the student population utilizing us, but that means that we have 65% that didn't utilize us, and I know we have support services that could benefit just about everybody. It means to me that I'm able to add another link between the TLC and the students. I know that as a big organization it's kind of hard to get word out to the students, especially because they're not going out and meeting with the students or being part of their classes or anything like that. So having that extra link probably helps them out a lot. And when you come down there's free coffee, tea, and hot cocoa, so make themselves at home and, and learn a little bit about how they can be supported. Welcome back, partners. The Department of Theater and Dance will be performing the Dark Comedy Company. From musical theater's most renowned composers, Company is largely regarded as a trailblazer of the dark comedy and musical genre. It is the winner of seven Tony Awards, including Best Musical, Best Score, Best Lyrics, and Best Book. The musical follows a bachelor named Robert, who's contemplated his unmarried life on the night of his 35th birthday. Over the course of a series of dinners, drinks, and even a wedding, his friends, all married, explained the pros and cons of taking on a spouse. The habitually single Robert is forced to question his own bachelorhood during a hilarious array of interactions. Company will be performed on May 4th through 6th and 9th through 11th in the Infact Studio Theater. A pre-show talk with the director will be held before the matinee on May 6th in room 221 of the Noel Fine Arts Center. Get ready to sing with a cappella UWSP this Saturday. They will be hosting their semester concert, The Song Goes On. This Saturday, May 5th, Nathan Wagner has more. A cappella UWSP will be performing their end of semester performance, The Song Goes On, this Saturday, May 5th in the DUC Laird Room. This concert will feature the five a cappella groups on campus, No Strings Attached, On Point, The Point Pitches, Sforzando, and the non-audition group Aka Workshop. A variety of music is to be performed. We've got Bruno Mars, we've got Logic, we've got uh, The Beatles, we have uh, something from The Greatest Showman, we have Disney. I mean, uh, literally every genre of music you can think of is going to be performed at this concert. Country songs, rap songs, pop songs, R&B music. Uh, it's going to be, it's, it's a variety of music that the ensembles have prepared for this concert. Despite the variety in music genre, the concert is brought together by the theme of unity. The marching theme of the concert is going to be unity. It's going to be togetherness. Uh, we named it The Song Goes On because uh, we are partnering with The Trevor Project. A good portion of the proceeds from this concert will go towards The Trevor Project in support of mental health and unity. Uh, we are also doing a song, a group song at the very end from a musical Dear Evan Hansen, which talks a lot about the struggles of mental health and even mental illness in some cases. Each a cappella group has met and practiced on their own time and worked hard to make sure this concert is a good one. Typically, it's about four hours a week, no less than two hours a week that an ensemble will meet and rehearse on their own time. Uh, we as a cappella UWSP, uh, we give a place, and we are, since we're an organization, we uh, allow those ensembles to reserve 
practice rooms for their rehearsal purposes, but um, they've been practicing choreography. They've been preparing for this concert for pretty much the entire semester. Uh, we had a concert in March that was sort of, um, I don't want to call it a halfway point, but you'll see a good number of songs that were performed on the March concert as well. So if you had some favorites from the last concert, uh, you'll definitely hear a few of those. The concert last semester was held in the alumni room, but it was clear then the a cappella groups needed a change in venue. We ran out of seats. We sold out the concert in December. Um, we turned away a long line of angry students for the December a cappella concert. So we chose the Laird Room, which the alumni room seats officially about 160 people, whereas the Laird Room will seat about 370. So we're looking to double our audience size, which I think we can do without fail. We've already sold a good number of tickets for this concert. If you're interested in attending, tickets are $9 for adults and $5 for students and senior citizens, with free admission for students the day of if seats are still available. This event is a fantastic display of how much people love music and how much you want to sing. Uh, the majority of the people in these ensembles are not music majors, but they're dedicating their own time to sing in an ensemble for four hours a week, to make music with other people. Um, and it's going to be fantastic because a lot of this music, as opposed to your regular choir concerts, which are, you know, Beethoven and Mozart and classical music, this is all pop music. This is all music that's accessible by our generation. Mm -hmm. So that's just even more incentive for people to come out and enjoy their favorite songs, uh, come see their friends and colleagues perform on stage and see what we've been up to for the last semester. If you'd like to get in contact with any of the acapella groups, you can reach them on Facebook, Spin, join their email list, or talk to any of the members directly. Uh, it's going to be a fantastic concert. I'm really looking forward to it. This is Nathan Wagner with SPTV News. If you would like more information about the concert or acapella UWSP, contact Stefan Calguero. An alternative, an alternative band that blends folk, pop, hip-hop, and rock and roll will be performing at the University of Wisconsin-Stevens Point. Judah and the Lion with opening act Billy Raphael will be bringing their fun and carefree concert experience with UWSP students. Judah and the Lion was formed in Nashville by musicians from separate corners of the United States who brought their diverse backgrounds together. Their sound album, Folk, Hop and Roll, highlights their wide-ranging sound with funk, bass, hip-hop, percussion, distorted banjo riffs, and supersized melodies. A single from that album, Take It All Back, reached number one on the Alternative Sound Char Sounds Chart. Judah and the Lion will play on Friday, May 4th at 7.30 p.m. in the Quant Fieldhouse. Tickets are on sale now for $26.25 in advance or $31.25 the day of the show. Tickets can be purchased at the Ticket and Information Desk in the DUC. The Center Point Media Festival is coming up soon. Brianna Smith has more on this story. The Cinepoint Media Festival is occurring on May 14th at 7.30 p.m. in the DUC Theater. Cinepoint is an evening, about an hour, hour and a half, of uh, curated videos made by UWSP students uh, in the la from the last year. So we, we highlight uh, the, the, the best works from animation, drama, comedy, to experimental, um, um, to, to, to share with a wider audience on the big screen. Cinepoint is a great way for students to showcase their work they have made over the fall 2017 and spring 2018 semesters. Submitting your work is free and easy to do. Search for Cinepoint on the web and we have a submission form online where you just enter the, the title and uh, uh, online screener using YouTube or Vimeo um, and that submits it to us and we're able to preview the work. Submissions are due on May 11th, and there are a few regulations for the works that are submitted. We like to show as much work as possible then within reason. So we have a limit of 15 minutes, um, and we uh, encourage up to three submissions from a single person, uh, and we then will potentially include up to two. Um, we want to then kind of uh, spread the wealth in terms of the creators so we can show as much in terms of time and um, the amount of content as well. Submissions will be judged by a jury, and if your work is chosen, you will be notified by the 13th. I, I run a lot of the ship, um, so I'm making a lot of the decisions there, but uh, the Media Studies faculty help uh, quite a bit as well. This is a very much a uh, Division of Communication and Media Studies endeavor, uh, and the majority of the works that we screen are of Media Studies students, but 
we do also screen and show a lot of work from students that never even pass through our classes, which is really exciting. So, yeah, the student base is broadening, uh, but the, the, the judging typically happens through UD Studies faculty. The Centipoint Media Festival will have jury award winners for categories like Best Lighting, Best Cinematography, Best Audio Design, and more. My favorite category is we open it up for um, audience favorite. So we actually hold a vote at the end of the screening uh, and people are actually able to vote for their favorites and then we award an award for uh, Best of the Fest based on the audience reaction. And um, we usually get support from the local community in terms of gift certificates uh, and we pool those out into uh, the awards as well to award students um, for the work that they submit. Centipoint is free and open to the public and everyone is encouraged to join. But it's just it's a really good way to um, see fresh new voices, fresh new ideas, uh, and um, have fun. Uh, it's, it's a great way to celebrate the last academic year of the incredible creative talent that we have here at Point. Um, so uh, it, it's a great Monday night out at the movies and it looks great on the big screen of the DC theater. We crank the volume and it's, it's, it's just really genuinely a blast. So I encourage everyone to stop by. This is Brianna Schmidt with SPTV News. To find out more, contact Alex Ingersoll in the CAC. That's all we have for you this week for entertainment news. Now over to Austin LePak with Pointer Politics. I'm Dacian Scott with SPTV Entertainment News. Thanks, Dacian In politics this week, Governor Scott Walker has signed Executive Order Number 287 on Tuesday because of the increased potential for widespread wildfires in Wisconsin. We are taking a precautionary measure in order to protect our state, said Governor Walker. By taking this step, we are ensuring that the Wisconsin Department of Natural Resources has the tools to combat the spread of any wildfires. We appreciate the tireless efforts of the DNR, Wisconsin National Guard, and Wisconsin Emergency Management in working together to pre protect Wisconsin families. The National Weather Service ordered red flag warnings for portions of the Badger State on both Sunday and Monday. According to a press release, Walker's order will give the Wisconsin Department of Natural Resources more resources to deal with the conditions. 8% of children receiving school lunches for free or at a reduced price under a federal assistance program could lose that subsidy under a plan moving through the U.S. House of Representatives. A new memo from the nonpartisan Legislative Fiscal Bureau and requested by Senate Minority Leader Jennifer Schilling shows 23,369 children could lose their subsidized school lunches because their families will lose benefits through the state's food stamp program known as Food Share. The loss would result primarily from a major change proposed in the 2018 Farm Bill, a lower income threshold at which families may be automatically enrolled in other assistant programs at the time they are approved to receive food stamps. That means families with a household income of more than 130% of the federal poverty level would no longer be automatically identified as eligible to receive free and reduced price meals, requiring the families to find and fill out the paperwork on their own in order to continue receiving the benefit. A spokeswoman for Government Scott Walker said the governor hopes any efforts in Washington, D.C. to make changes to public benefits will be done in a way that protects children and helps able-bodied adults get the skills needed to join the workforce. That is all we have for you this week in Pointer Politics. I'm Austin Leepak, and we'll be right back after the break. So, here they have like a sale at the DUC or whatever. Yeah. Some like type of coffee.
serving a campus of 9,600 strong. We are the home of UWSP Television. We are SPTV. You can find us on Charter Channel 983, online, or on any of our social media sites. That is all we have for you this week at SPTV News. This will be our last newscast of the semester, and we'll return with regular broadcast next fall. Until next time, Stevens Point, as always, have a great night, and thank you for watching.